Can we reveal anything to our users? Uh, what's coming? Any new projects? What they can expect? <laughs> I can make a sneak preview <laughs> because it's coming up just for me. I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly when we will have this video out. Hi everyone, this is Cassia from Naga. Welcome to our YouTube channel. And for those of you who are new, Naga is a unique social trading platform and famous for its amazing feature, Autocopy. We are here today with Naga CEO, Ben Bilski, who agreed to do a little Q&A. We will ask questions that were sent to us by our Naga users. I will also ask questions that I wanted always to ask our CEO, because I'm here and I can. So, <laughs> we can start now. Hi Ben, how are you? Good. <laughs> ready? Yeah, I'm very, okay. very ready. I have no idea what you will ask, but I will try to respond in a good way. So. Yes. Questions are a surprise. Our community has been waiting for a very long time for this. They are yeah. very excited to hear what you have to say. So I'll start with my questions. Yeah. Just to, so they can get to know you a little bit and get to know Naga. And then we will proceed with their questions. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. Question number one. So there are CEOs and there are CEOs. Yeah. Yes. What is your day-to-day -day like and at Naga and what are some of the principles you follow when running a multi-million dollar business? Um, that's an extremely good question. As I think Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, my day-to-day -day job is actually completely uh, chaotic. Uh, so in a way that I don't plan things ahead uh, a lot. I mean, I have calls, you know, I, I have to talk a lot to investors. Um, and investors usually they plan it beforehand so this is one thing that is stable and the rest is I just come in and I see whatever happens because at, at this uh, stage at this scale um, every day something can happen something good something bad um, and if I would be planned through it then maybe I would miss it so um, the day-to-day -day job really looks like uh, I start my day at uh, 7 a.m. firstly mobile so I'm online already um, and then I come to the office around, depends, 9, 30, 10. And then I stay usually until 8, 9. Um, and then during that day, I manage whatever takes on the operation side. However, uh, at this stage, I need to delegate a lot because the more I do, um, the worse it is for the company because my job is maybe to go externally, to find, uh, to, find to do fundraising, to uh, put the company strategy in place. Um, and the more I do on the operations, the more I am just project managing, which I shouldn't do. So this is also the daily struggle, you know, because um, people need uh, you, people ask you, you have always an opinion. I'm also someone who, it's still a founder-led business, so I'm one of the founders, so I'm definitely sometimes a bit crazy with control, <laughs> and, uh, and you guys feel it as well, so sometimes I want to be informed, but I shouldn't. So it's a chicken-egg uh, situation, as I think, and I'm a bit uh, of a paranoid CEO for sure. <laughs> I always think there should be something no. happening. <laughs> I have to be on it and I have to know what's going on. And this is a, you know, sometimes it's really good uh, and sometimes really bad for the team. So we're trying to balance it. But in a nutshell, um, you know, I'm, I love what I do. I love our company. Um, I think we, we have a great business. We have great people. And uh, I just try to go move with the flow now and, uh, and make sure that our investors are happy. Speaking of business, What's the difference between Naga then, Naga now, and what is Naga in the future? Uh, okay, uh, let's go back a bit, not too much uh, in, in history, but we created the company in 2015. It was just a PowerPoint presentation, so this is where it started, with an idea to make uh, finance easier, uh, and we got a really good reception between 2015 and 17. So we got investments, and then uh, we also listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, so we went public which was very, very fast. But uh, if you do it so quickly, Naga then didn't have the same structure and operations as it has today. Naga then didn't have the right business model and growth strategy as it has today. So between 2017 and 19, it was very uh, turbulent. You wouldn't like to be there. <laughs> <laughs> the stage was, it was not nice. Uh, it was uh, definitely the worst uh, part of my career professionally. And then I took over as the CEO in 2019. And what changed now is really, we have structure, we have a clear uh, uh, growth roadmap, we know where we want to be in two years, three years, five years, we have the right investors now. Um, 
also our share price recovered a lot. That's also uh, seen. I think that the product is much better, the offering is much better, and I think all in all is uh, is a big change when it comes to you know understanding how to grow the business, and mm -hmm. this is reflects obviously in entire operation. Before, I don't want to say it was freestyle. Yeah, you should not run with freestyle. <laughs> But in a way, there was uh, any 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 week or any month something could have changed fundamentally. Mm -hmm. Now we try to keep it stable. We push, and you can see it on our growth rates because we're like growing very fast. We have growth pain now, which we didn't have before because there was no clear, there was no growth, and now there's really growth. And I think Naga today is a, is a better company and is very much set up for the future. So when we look at the future. I believe in uh, in super apps, okay? So uh, we have a Chinese investor, right, uh, Fuzun, and I spend a lot of time in China. So I've learned something about WeChat. WeChat uh, is, uh, is actually something like WhatsApp, but with WeChat you can do your banking business, you can uh, buy flowers, you can uh, rent cars, you can run your business and you run your own shop. So it's like an app for everything. And I believe that in finance, you also have to have an app for everything. At the moment, users, they need to do five times verifications with five different providers. One for crypto, one for banking, one for saving, one for, I don't know, trading. And our goal now with Naga is to unite this all, that you have banking with our Naga pay, payments, then you have crypto with Naga X and Naga Wallet and the crypto offering, and you have everything around investing. So, the future of Naga, it will be looking like having three divisions, which is the investing, the crypto and the payments division, and they all united under one hub, or under one umbrella. And this is where we will be driving in the future of the company, because we believe this is the future, nothing else. People want one solution, convenience, exciting interface, they don't want this boring text walls and, and you know, not understanding anything. So that's why we work with you so much on the feet and uh, <laughs> fixing it a lot. <laughs> but I believe that uh, this whole thing must be a bit more exciting. It's still very boring, everything. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm bored by finance still, and we need to fix it. So speaking of the feed, you yourself are super active on there. You yeah. do your polls, you do your uh, surveys about asset listing, about what's next. You you welcome opinions, you welcome feedback, feedback of our users. So how important is that part? Oh, very important. I think in the beginning, um, when we started to really take the feed seriously, I think like two years ago, I was being held back internally by the teams and say, don't go so much in the front and uh, don't talk to the users so much and you know, this is not how it works in the industry. And mm -hmm. I was like, no, but it's very important that we open dialogue and sometimes uh, we make mistakes. I mean, uh, we are just, uh, I mean, we run by humans, we're not run by machines. So we make a mistake. And if our community says this was really bad, then we have to allow them to tell it was really bad. Because, uh, you know, you have to take the good and the bad and allow it to be communicated. Mm -hmm. and then we can learn from it. And the more transparent we are, the better. Yes, sometimes we, for example, have to remove content from the feed because people are you know, harassing us or uh, uh, saying not the nicest words to us. <laughs> which, or to other users yeah, well, or which I also things. experience. Yeah, so, but, but this is, um, but the core transparency, you need to allow it as much as it's feasible. And mm -hmm. um, that's why I'm there as well. And I'm actively using our app. I'm not allowed to trade or copy through or whatever, but I'm actively using it as my platform for reading our news. Do we have good content? Um, do we give something good to the user? Um, I'm checking how they are after good days or bad days. Uh, yesterday, for example, was a very rough day. There was this uh, fat speech by Powell and the market's correct. People might lose money, people get stressed and you need to see what is the sentiment of the community. Uh, and, and I think this is a core that people appreciate long, long uh, term. And uh, the ones that shouldn't be there, they shouldn't be there. But I think we have to um, always be around and I will try as much as I can until I have no time at all anymore, but I will always try to be there. And I want to know why are you here in Naga and what do you like and what do you don't like? How can we improve it in a very difficult industry based on what the users uh, were used to? 
where things were hidden, centralized, uh, you were alone in a way, and here suddenly you're in a community, people say good and bad things. Some people are even thinking, wow, they are showing bad comments. It's okay, let, let, I mean, let the people complain, but we do something about it. Or mm -hmm. let the people tell us that it's good. So that's why for me the feed is the heart of the, of the platform. This was actually my next question. So maybe we can lift a little bit of veil of mystery here when we do receive that neg negative uh, feedback sometimes yes whether it's um you know true or not uh maybe we can tell our users a little bit how we backstage deal with it because maybe sometimes they have a feeling like we don't listen but we do we, we, do we see every little word they yes. post yes. so tell us a little bit about it when how we deal with that yeah so we have an internal monitoring tool where we see every single post and comment and uh, sometimes believe us there's drama in the company <laughs> because some things shouldn't happen and I am getting I am that's where I get a bit I'm, I'm raging sometimes and I'm really I'm getting I'm going really pissed off I'm sorry <laughs> when I see this I'm really unhappy um, but we fix it I mean we're on it some things are from the language just not displayable if somebody would write us a constructive feedback then we would of course allow it to be there uh, but it's anyways with us I mean we are with if, the, if there is some words that we don't want to see and don't want to even speak out then it's tough and I know that people sometimes are upset um, platforms have sometimes issues it's technology it happens to every uh, big platform it's not an excuse but it happens we have to take it serious for example with a tech issue or maybe we introduce something where the people didn't like or on the other hand also we have um, good comments that we cherish and that we share but our company and our teams uh, this is one of the mandates that I gave everyone um, make everyone aware what's happening with the users and I, I don't want complaints at all I don't want people unhappy because they will leave us and this is the worst thing that can happen so yes there is a for example from some companies there is a um, on purpose ignorance on these things because I say 10% ah, of the users complain. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe so. I mean, you have to be, uh, you have to take everything very seriously so the users can keep on, you know, telling us what they think. But uh, <laughs> what's your language? <laughs> because yes. some some things that's just you know it's disrespectful and uh, I don't think people would uh, if they would meet us face to face say these things. Mm -hmm. So if they would behave like they would behave with us in real life, I'm, I'm fine. With that we would never ever moderate this away or something but yeah. we take it very very serious like very serious yeah we like to call them keyboard warriors <laughs> who can say whatever they can on a keyboard but yeah face to face no yeah and like i like you said we get a lot of very positive feedback yes. uh, most recently i found out that our slovakian team uh, of users is very happy with our youtube videos oh, and nice. they love our popular investor series and they get their education from there, who to copy and who to follow and how to use leaderboard. So it's really nice. Um, so what is the golden, is there a golden recipe uh, for success when it comes to business and building a business, building a new technology? Yes, I think, look, there's a mix of, uh, I mean, this goes far in terms of building business, being successful. You have to have always a, a target. That's very simple. You need to have a goal um, and you need to be uh, prepared um, to take the up and downs all the time uh, no matter if it's running the business building technologies or products or managing a project um, you have to be resilient yes yeah? so on one hand have a focus and on the other hand be resilient be prepared it can go straight to the goal or sometimes you would get I don't know you get so much deteriorated uh, that, uh, that it might break some people off the flow and they just stop and that's why I would always say never stop, right? So if we build a product, um, you have to understand what is the goal of the product or of the feature. We are launching now something super crazy nice, which we will announce soon, right? For the, for the investors as well, for the copy uh, analytics, for example. Um, so we need to understand what is the goal and what does it bring and what is the value behind it? How do I get there? What can, you know, what can destroy my flow? What can get me off track? How do I cope with it? like mentally as well because it's you know you have to be at it how do i motivate the teams around it and how do i make everyone follow my goal 
and everything you do has to have a target and a goal. If you don't have a goal, you, you will not reach it uh, and you will not fulfill anything. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one part and it comes to business as well. I learned when we had very rough times that you have to be just resilient to it and try to find a solution even if everything looks very dark and bad. And uh, this comes down also to uh, the mentality uh, and a lot of people like to say many things, you know, and they comment, they like, they, they love to comment if something doesn't work, like they love it and, and this is sometimes I feel that people, they, they suddenly live up and say, oh, I knew it didn't work, and, uh, you know, uh, and this, this noise is also not nice, but again, you have to expect that this comes, that there will be critics when you go down, but that there will be uh, people cherishing you when you go up, so you have to also expect uh, success messages and don't be impressed by it just go further the same way you will get critics don't be uh, demotivated by it so that's again resilience is for me a massive important thing and have goals and last thing put the goals super high no matter what you want to achieve with this feature i want to revolutionize my entire platform or i want to do this and that yeah so that's very very important um, that we kind of have this uh, always in mind. So speaking of these goals and building the business and so on, uh, can we reveal anything to our users? Uh, what's coming and new projects, what they can expect? <laughs> I can make a sneak preview <laughs> because it's <laughs> yeah. coming up just for me. I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly when we will have this video out, but mm -hmm. it's good to have it already from my side. So we are launching actually, d despite the, the Naga Pay project that, we, that goes live, which is I mean, for us, I mean, I can't wait to have this card uh, because it's really beautiful now. Uh, the other thing is, for example, we, we are really focusing on our popular investors. You started the series, um, reception is extremely positive. People have thousands of views and people react to it. Um, and we decided to build a analytics dashboard for them to give you a complete insight of your audience. You know, for example, in Instagram, if you run an account yourself, you have insights. Uh, how many people follow you, where they're from, at what time. And in our case, we take it to another level in, in, in Naga, where we say, if you have copiers, if you're a trader, even if you have one copier, you will see where are your copiers from? When are they active? What do they copy? How do they behave? Um, <clears throat> how are you doing? How can you improve your performance as a popular investor, as an influencer? And I think this kind of dashboard or analytics tool is one of a kind in the market and I think that uh, this will help the users a lot. And what was our target? To help everyone understand how they can make extra money from their trading by delivering uh, a good performance to the community. Mm -hmm. So there's a win-win. For us it's a win because people are happy. Copiers have a win because the leaders will be better informed and knows what to do. What to trade, which position side to trade, because We've seen many times that users did not understand exactly how to get the best out of their influence. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really a great tool for everyone. Plus, the Popular Investor Program, I think you will also talk a lot about it, um, there will be massive perks, right? Yep. Like a salary and uh, merchandise, and I think that's, that's also a great thing. It shows where we are going with the platform, not from only trade yourself, but really have influencers. Um, the same way we go to YouTube and watch a video because of good content, the same way we go to Instagram to have a nice picture, again because of good content, we go to Naga because of good trading content. And this is the vision behind uh, all of this. <laughs> Who's excited? Okay. So now I would like to move on to our users' questions. We had a little post going on on our feed, mm -hmm. you saw. Our users asked you some questions and here they are, okay. one by one. Good. Lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first question, do you trade? If no, why not? If yes, what's your strategy? Uh, I trade uh, only outside Naga because I'm not allowed, I'm a director. So, uh, I, I mainly, and if I trade, I trade cryptocurrencies because I'm, uh, I'm an early adopter since 2014. I'm in crypto, um, understanding the concept of Bitcoin, Ethereum, that was my first holdings. And my strategy is actually the whole strategy. So. I try to uh, buy when the prices drop to lower down my average price mm -hmm. and that's it and mm -hmm. you know I'm, I love trading cryptocurrencies because it's the future um, and if I could trade obviously on Naga I would, uh, I would sc scan the leaderboards all the time I would uh, try 
you know, who's really doing well for me mm -hmm. um, and uh, what would fit my, my belief of how I should grow my account because, you know, I think a lot of people are uh, not patient enough, and that's a big problem, mm -hmm. and they panic very quickly because if you stay, again, what is your goal in trading? And that, that's more a generic discussion. I'm not a top trader, but we've built this platform seven years. I understand a lot about behavior, uh, you know, mechanisms behind why people trade and how they mm -hmm. trade. And I think this is the two big factors. They don't have a goal and they don't show the patience enough. And this kind of, if you, if you manage that, then you can be a good trader as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes markets don't go in your direction, but you stay calm, wait, and it, it will be fine. But this is kind of a concept that I think I also do in, in crypto. I mean, come on, crypto is uh, the most volatile asset class of the last <laughs> 10 years. Yeah? Yes. And, uh, and yes, of course, you get stressed when Bitcoin uh, dips 50%. And you think like, oh my God, it's it. And then you go to the news and everyone's talking about that's it. Bitcoin is crashing. It's worthless. And, you know, again, emotions might influence your decision that you will pay later for. So again, you stay cool. You say, what is my goal? I want to make X amount of money or I want to hold my Bitcoins until that in that year, no matter what, yeah. no matter the value. And then you will see what comes next. And then you block Elon Musk on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. And so on. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, I would like to. <laughs> How many Naga Global customers do you have compared to no compared to normal customers? <laughs> uh, I mean, we are in a, we are worldwide operation. Um, obviously, we have users globally and in Europe, but we don't disclose uh, breakdowns. Usually, you know, we're publicly listed, and um, we're disclosing revenues. We're dis disclosing. How, how much money we spent and, and, and the growth on the user base, but we don't do any breakdowns. I think uh, what's maybe noteworthy that, you know, the platform is in 14 languages. Um, we are active in Southeast Asia. We're going to Australia now. We have majority of our clients in Europe um, because we are uh, from the European soil. We started in Germany, we're in Cyprus. We are regulated under the European umbrella. Um, obviously, we're looking in, for example, something like, because I spent some time there, in Dubai, we're looking to maybe go to the MENA region, so Middle East, um, which is exciting, you know. But th that's it. But I don't give any numbers on breakdown users. I don't think that's relevant. Okay. Well, I have another user question. This one is very serious. Okay. What's your favorite animal and why? <laughs> animal. Oh my god. Um, I have a cat. <laughs> I love my cat. It's a British short hair, but no, actually, my my favorite animal is a dolphin. The, oh, yeah, I love dolphins. Okay. Why? Because I mean, I, I have a swimming background, right? So um, I was swimming a uh, long time in the national team as well. And uh, when I see dolphins, I remind myself of, like how fast they can go through the water, and uh, I like how they communicate and they are a bit more humanish. You know, mm -hmm. love I love dolphins. Oh, that's nice. Well, so this is a favorite animal of Ben. Very important question in our interview. Okay, so moving forward, how is your relationship with the developers and are you coding yourself? Um, no, I don't code myself. I think what I have is a, I have a very good understanding of infrastructure and architecture. So I understand the entire uh, interconnection between um, the databases, APIs, front-end deployments, uh, and also how to how to run infrastructure, and that's why from day one when I started Naga, I was the one officially in the beginning I was the CTO, but I was not the, the coder, right? But I was the one trying to get the people together to build the product because I had the understanding from the past of how a platform and how it's built up. Of course, I make mistakes; it's natural. But today, what is my relationship to the developers? I am the point of contact when it comes to R&D and innovation. So for example, the dashboard that we're building, I mean, this idea comes up and I said like we should have some inside tools and from there it starts. So, uh, and then the team takes over and does a great job, of course, and to, to enhance it and make it perfect. Um, but my connection is quite close to the developers. I know what's happening. Um, I, I would jump in when we need to find a solution, maybe a complex one, where I can assist the CTO. Obviously, on some things, I don't have the insight, but I am in love with tech. That's the thing. I love product and I love technology. I maybe don't like finance that much as I love technology. And I love user experience. I love user interfaces. I like design and I like user journey. So when I say I like it, it's for me very important, you know, 
and this always involves developers. So mm -hmm. always I'm in contact and in touch with our CTO all the time on WhatsApp, like constantly. And then on the Slack, we run it via this uh, communication tool Slack that people might know. We have tons of channels. I think I have 300 channels or so, <laughs> and they are always developers. So always pinging, always <laughs> notification, tagging them. Yes. Yeah, so so <laughs> if you ask me, I have a very close connection to the dev team, and I understand that the, what we're building and running is not easy. So sometimes we do mistakes as well. Not only that platform goes down, not, not this mistake, but maybe we build things that take longer or it's too complicated and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be there as much as I can. However, my duty is on the investor relations front and, and on, the, on the share, etc. But there's, uh, I love technology. That's mm -hmm. If I could, I would say every day there. Mm -hmm. It has to be technology focused because else we would just end up running a, exactly a classical trading desk or brokerage or bank, which we yeah. don't want. Yeah. Well. Where is the line of joining finance and social media? Is there a line? Is there an end point? Um, look, I think uh, that in the future, everything regarding community and any topic, be it food, be it fashion, be it sports, finance, travel, will be all social. I mean, mm -hmm. why? Because how many users has TikTok? One billion. How many users has Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp? Three billion. People are used to messaging, communication. This is, the, this is like their water already. So if I go to finance, why should I accept a complete different interface just because it's finance? Mm -hmm. I want to talk, talk to someone. I want to uh, read the news right away, like I did on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok. I don't want to have text walls. I want to have videos and pictures. That's where we're moving as well with Naga, right? We will uh, launch stories, for example, where we will maybe go away from writing much text. We will have punchy video lines because this is what users want. And I think this is the, the connection. So make the content and the transactions um, more social because social apps won the game of the internet. Mm -hmm. They won it. I mean, YouTube as well. It's a video platform. It's the most visited site in the world. I mean, YouTube has 2 billion hours of active users. Um, mm -hmm. This is where we, if we want to survive in any vertical, be it uh, even insurance business, which is a bit slower than finance, but it will come as well, will be also social. Mm -hmm. I, I strongly believe betting, spot betting, for example, or these kind of things, gambling. I just was reading about the blockchain platform that combines social media with gambling now uh, by the Reddit founder. He, he founded it. Um, so you see that the, this, this movement is, uh, is coming. How can I integrate my Naga account with the multi charts platform? What data feed provider is used in Naga? Oh, we have uh, multiple data feeds, um, and this is a more technical question. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we offer this from the scratch on the Naga platform. However, as we are integrated with MetaTrader, the MetaCodes backend on MT4 and MT5, I think there is a way to get uh, the multi charts in. But that, that's a very interesting question, and I think we should uh, for sure ask our dealing team and trading desk how to approach this, because if somebody wants that, Mm -hmm. uh, then you should ask them for the details and maybe we can have a solution for more professional oriented traders. I think it's possible. Okay, um, yeah. perfect. So what do you think about the importance of Naga as a social environment beyond copy trading? What are expected developments for personal feeds? Will we mm -hmm. be able to chat with each other? Will the boards <coughs> be more supported as a between user platform? Okay, so Exactly, so uh, the Naga should not be just a copy trading platform. Copy trading is just a tool. <clears throat> the most important thing is the social environment and the community. So, you, we have the feed. The feed, what is the feed now? Uh, it's some curated content by us. We pin some posts and um, there are some user feedbacks. However, I think we should be doing it smarter and also more aggregated. Like, uh, when you go, for example, to someone's feed and you see he has 500 autocopy events, the feed is useless. So what we need to do, we need to group it and we need to display it better. We need to give more content recommendations. We need to learn what the users really consume and how they want it. So this is a long-term process. Building a feed, I just want to give you an insight. I mean, I think Facebook has 1,000 people working on the feed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the main revenue source as well for the ads, but still, <clears throat> in our case also, we are increasing the teams on the feed to make it more um, engaging mm -hmm. because then you stay on the platform you consume your content with us you don't go to other platforms to consume news you stay on Naga 
and you can directly trade or copy trade or connect. Now with the messenger, um, I don't think we will allow direct messaging. Why? Because unfortunately guys, there are a lot of scammers. They will ask you for your details. They will try to get uh, your crypto addresses or we had it all. They will try competitions at us. They will try to sign up as a real user and get through everything and then try to get um, our users to their broker. It happens and uh, you know, they would uh, impersonate us. How many times we had it just recently yes. where they call and say they are from the Security Exchange Commission and they are investigating and they, they were, you know, faking that they know your balance and whatever. Um, unfortunately, the direct messaging feature as of now, because it's encrypted, so we don't know what people are writing. Mm -hmm. So we cannot moderate it and we don't want to go to every chat of every people, person that would be strange. Mm -hmm. So that's why unfortunately I think we will still keep the public channels but we will be planning to have leader channels so that a leader <coughs> has its own channel after he will be qualified as a popular investor and there they can communicate at least with the leader and we can moderate it mm -hmm. but it has to stay public in the domain where we are. Why not allow bots in MT5 to take Naga to the next level in tech trading? <laughs> <laughs> you Why not bots? I mean, bots, uh, <laughs> bots is everything against us, yeah, so because uh, we are a human-led community. And um, for us, I think, look, um, I, don't want, I don't want this kind of automated stuff. Uh, but also, if you go to the chats, uh, there's always someone. I mean, yes, on the human level, there are limits because people have to sleep sometimes or make some mistakes but still it's a human element and bots can be obviously on trading as well but do you want to follow a bot um, I mean we don't have these bot traders at all we don't want that and I don't think it's fair to the community I mean because then you plug in a system and the bot trades 1000 times and it's just a system right he loses some money and he doesn't he doesn't care because it's a bot yeah. so I mean yes in our case what, what, what people can do is they can plug in their strategies and so-called EA, Expert Advisor, they can do that via MT4 and MT5 and they can deploy their trading strategy automatically. Mm -hmm. I think we have one user, she's called Vicky, Vicky Joy or something. Uh, she, she's, um, she's using, for example, EA transparently. She says, this is my EA and it makes two to three trades a day. This is great. This is what we like because somebody was working to develop a strategy and provides this content to the user mm -hmm. and the copiers can benefit. But other than this, we don't want any automated trading. How about the relative copy fee, like 10-20% of the profit the copier <coughs> made? Yes, so what, um, what is the idea behind the copy fee? So we believe that um, content has to be remunerated. The same way we might not feel it uh, when we go to the big social platforms, but the influencers at scale they are being paid by different sources right in our case because we have a customer environment where people are already in and they are our official customers we have one customer who shares good content and the other user consumes that we don't want to have any scalability in sharing content because we cannot evaluate how good the content will be however we want to motivate our leaders because they get their bonuses from it they get paid we want to motivate them to do more like better and better content over time. That's a long-term strategy. And we have this marketplace model where the copiers fund the fund for the content creators. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the leaders in our case, we look at them as content creators. We don't look at them as traders. Yes, they trade, but primarily they deploy content. Okay. So um, I think that this, this fee that we're charging, it's a flat fee. It won't change anymore. We had to increase it due to various factors. Um, and I think that's, that's the fairest model for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because even if you make a profit of uh, $5,000, you pay $1. Mm -hmm. If I start now introducing 20% profit fee, I come suddenly, I'll, I'll be a portfolio management platform, which you don't want to be. And then you will pay $1,000 on that trade. I don't think it's fair. And, and this is a too short term thinking because sometimes, and you have seen it in the, in the popular investor reviews, Sometimes our leaders generate hundreds of thousands of profits. Yes, it's tempting for Naga now to take 20%. Great, mm -hmm. because we facilitated it. But on this $200,000, we maybe you know, earn like $400 in fees and give it back to the leaders. Great, so we just interconnect and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the fairest model 
um, and again doesn't punish you when you make a lot of profit mm -hmm. and you shouldn't have this cut taken away and I think given our spreads and our fees we are not the most expensive platform anyways in trading however we offer so much more than any other trading platform and this is a way how we compensate um, running it because it's extremely expensive to run this company somebody have told me back then uh, I would be like wow this is what it takes to run uh, such a tech company mm -hmm. so it's not an attempt to make uh, money out of nothing mm -hmm. so that's that's the response about the fees because I know it's fees and costs are always an issue um, and uh, in our case we try to be as sensitive as we could be mm -hmm. Would it be possible to check whether you can adjust the copy function? I think it would be great if I could, for mm -hmm. example, choose from a person that I could only copy gold or silver yeah. or nuts <coughs> and so on. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think uh, it's time to fix the auto copy feature in a way that we will enhance it. I think we will think about having or, or, or copying only specific assets so it doesn't matter on the leader but you want to just be in gold you stay in gold um, however i believe that this is uh, deviating from the strategy of the leaders because they actually are the ones knowing what they do and they have their strategy so it's a bit like kind of trying to take control over their mm -hmm. control and why don't you just become a leader yourself mm -hmm. you know like why don't you do it yourself because you know how it works um, but we might adjust it for example also um, how much to use of your equity, like of your balance, uh, what to copy and the frequency, not more than X trades a day, something like this. So we will be looking because obviously we want people to use this feature as much as possible, but we also want that our leaders don't have suddenly 500 copiers and then, yeah, 50 users didn't want to uh, trade the asset, the other ones didn't want to trade more than that, you know, and it becomes for the content creator difficult. Yeah. So he, he doesn't know how to market his profile correctly to um, provide the best strategy. So you have to always look at a higher picture rather than I am a copier, I just follow this guy and I don't want anything else in silver. Fair enough. But think about the repercussions on the entire strategy of that leader and the entire community. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes kind of, I would say, um, yeah, can you just not trade by yourself mm -hmm. and do it yourself? Yeah. Because it's not the idea of copy trading. Yeah. DIY trading, my friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about protecting starting traders more? For instance, by using <coughs> lower default trade sizes that they could enlarge later and warn more that copy trading tool can make you lose money. We do warn you. <laughs> we do. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So <laughs> I would encourage everyone to read the articles, to read, uh, to go to Naga Academy take part in the webinars. I think that it's the same like, look, if people buy a washing machine or like a laundry machine or something, you know, they read all the reviews, they are they're going crazy, they are even comparing prices, well, but 20 years here, 10, 10 years there, who's writing, how many stars does it have? But with their money sometimes, they go blindly into something and I'm not blaming, I'm not trying to put myself on, on, on top of everyone, I'm not saying that people are uh, limited in their in their knowledge, but I think the attitude has to change. I mean, it's your hard-earned money, and before you do something, uh, inform yourself. Like, what does the platform offer you to inform yourself? And if you don't find it, talk to us, and people will respond. Especially if it's not a complaint. I mean, our team is always happy to explain. I I'm doing mystery shopping myself, so sometimes I'm asking the stupidest questions uh, by myself to the teams, and they I will get a good reply. We are now launching the uh, new tutorial videos, for example, professionally done. I think that should be our, our job is to give the content to educate the people. If you're an educated trader, you are a good trader or better trader. You will doesn't guarantee success, but you will not suddenly wake up and say, oh, wow, wow, wow what happened? <laughs> and uh, oh, no, you or, or this guy or whatever. You also sometimes have to see if you if you point the finger five fingers and four fingers point back to yourself, mm -hmm. you know? So in a way you have to just see, did I do everything in my power with my knowledge to understand what it means? Does the platform offer it to me? And we do. We, are, we have our profiles in Naga Academy profile, the asset boards, we have you posting content, analyzing the leaders, we have the academy, the webinars, we have the articles, we have the blog now. I mean, there's a lot of 
information when you invest one hour, then you will protect your heart and money in a better way. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the protection we are doing and I think we do a lot. We spend also a lot of money on the content and on the videos and uh, I hope more and more users will um, appreciate and adapt to it. Not to mention also that we are regulated, so we will never uh, serve you anything that is not allowed. Yeah, to be of course served, not. No, no. Obviously. Yeah. So another user question about Naga's share price. Where do you see this going? <laughs> the share price, uh, it's, it's an interesting, uh, of course, item in our company history because share price determines value of the company. Um, let's give it a bit more context. We listed in 2017 we had 20 million shares on the market and one share was 2 euros and 60 which, made, which means 20 million times 2 euros 60 is 52 million euros market value so then um, we did not um, have enough free float so there was not a lot of users or, or investors sorry that, uh, that bought the share because it was a small offering very small what happened back then was that um, a lot of um, investors were interested and they pumped the price in the same way actually what happens with games with AMC where there's not a lot of stocks on the market the shares and a lot of demand and then it pulls up so I'm just giving you context because if you look at the share price chart you will see a huge spike up down everything was fine and then we crashed because we had issues with the company in 2018-19 so we went from 50 million market cap to 300 I think in the pump of the and I have to say pump, it's not us, it was the users or the investors that we had no control of. And then it dropped to like five euros. Mm -hmm. When I took over in 2019, the share price was below one euro. And in the worst part, it was 50 cents. So we back then had them, we increased our capital back in the, in, the, in the process. We had then 40 million shares. So 40 million shares times 50 cents is 20 million market value. So we were completely down. I mean, 20 million market value is not a lot for a listed company in Germany. So today we are at six euros. So now we are at 250 million. So after I took over and uh, was meeting it with my management uh, colleagues, we um, have a 12x improvement on the share price, which is great. It's good for the investors. It's the highest market cap that we ever had. In this uh, first quarter, we were even at eight euros per share. So we peaked or even nine, I think, because there was also... It was over 8, yeah, over yeah. 8 50 So it was like um, 360 million or mm -hmm. something, which is great for fintech. However, I believe, and I have to say that, I believe we are under undervalued, that's my view, because my fellow colleagues running other fintech companies not being public, being private, their valuations are already billions with the same revenue profile. Our revenue profile of uh, Q1 was uh, 40 million dollars, so 12 million euros, and I know um, that we are one of the strongest fintechs in Germany at that age in the sector. Mm -hmm. So, if we were private, maybe the shares would be higher, but who knows? I mean, mm -hmm. that's a different story. So, the shares determines a bit where we are, but it's a long term vision. I am interested in the share price in 2025 mm -hmm. or 2026. Now, obviously, I need to get um, investors in, they help us. We raised funds as well via convertibles from the US and we need growth capital because we want to push for more. Mm -hmm. And the sh a good share price and a good share price development helps you. So obviously I will always take care of it. Um, I'm a shareholder so I'm fully aligned with anyone who likes Naga because I, I, I will rise and fall with the company. This is what I have is in, in Naga, right? And I invested a lot of my own money to Naga. It's seven digits, it's millions. I mean that I invested. So I want this to succeed, but it's a long-term game. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the Naga shares and the market cap, etc., it's a long-term view, mm -hmm. and this is what matters. And I know that now I have to build for the future to develop the price mm -hmm. in a good way. And sometimes I'm not looking at all where we are. I'm just don't looking because mm -hmm. it's uh, would drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are your plans with the Naga coin? Yes, um, Naga coin again, going back to the history, 2017, very large ICO uh, with a partner company. It was not us, it's very important, it was a partner company. We enabled the Naga coin to um, flourish in the platform. Um, it didn't work back then because of hitting the crypto winter. And our focus was uh, after that more to fix our company and to rescue the company 
to build the right uh, business uh, profile and strategy and also to build the platform and the users. Now, um, there will be most likely attempts to, uh, to get it back to track, like we will um, talk with uh, an external team once again who raised interest to develop more technology around it and to give it a bit more value. I know that they were in contact with uh, trying to get more volume in the market, to have it you know, better liquidity for the coin and to give it more visibility. So for sure we are interested as the house of Naga coin and to make it, you know, to make it valuable for the coin holders because they connect obviously the Naga coin with Naga because it's a platform utility token. Um, however, financially we are not involved into the token, um, you know, structure. However, we understand the responsibility to make sure that the uh, users at least can at some stage get back to the issue price of the dollar the coin. So this should be the long-term goal and there are uh, initiatives and I'm not trying to be political <laughs> but there are initiatives that uh, there will be movement this year on the Naga coin for sure. So the next question is when do you see improved integration of Naga coin into the platform? Yeah that, that's what I'm saying also at the moment we have the team that is onboarded we will work on the crypto division we are licensing our crypto products as well. We hired a managing director on crypto. He will join next week, actually. It's also a very good time for him. And he obviously has a Naga coin as a, as a project. So he's very interested. He actually bought, I think, Naga coin back then even. So he's interested to make it work. And uh, we will definitely um, give it a much better use case and make sure that it is tradable. So you might expect that it's being listed in our uh, platform which drives volume and demand and might drive the price, but I, I'm not a financial advisor, right? Mm -hmm. But it might, based on the economics, drive the price. It's limited supply, more people trading and trying to make profit. It will be forwarded to the exchanges where we're listed. So we directly forward it. And then I believe that this will move the price. Mm. The next question is a bit specific about it. Is there a legal barrier to the price of Naga coin reaching five thousand dollars by December tenth, two thousand twenty-one? I mean, I don't know if there's a legal barrier. I mean, if Elon Musk maybe puts Naga coin on on his account in his bookmark, maybe it can happen. But there's no legal barrier. Okay, <laughs> adding it to the list of my tasks: contact Elon Musk. Another question, regardless of the range within the platform, bronze, gold, crystal, so the VIP levels, will you try to adjust the spreads? By they be interesting in some instruments, I think, by the way, thank you, man. By the way, be interesting in some instruments to facilitate and increase the volume of, trans of transactions in addition to favoring the small investor. So the, so the core question is if we can lower spreads <laughs> yes. to drive more traffic um, and despite the levels. I think um, this is all related to pricing and uh, we have a pricing policy over time. There's always reasoning why we charge what we charge. It's not that somebody wakes up and says, hey, uh, put a spread of 1.7 on your USD because no. I think very important once again, compare us with competition and not only on pricing but on offering. It's a very uh, important thing. What do we offer per level? What do we give you? And what do you pay for it? And what do other platforms give you? I mean, of course, you can go to a so-called ECN raw spread broker, whatever. I, I don't know, it's a very technical where they claim it's zero fees. Uh, a lot of people claim zero fees. What do they offer? You sit there, you have a big chart, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and you just trade. Great, if you are price sensitive, maybe Naga is not the best place in that term. However, if you value community, if you value an the crypto wallet, the crypto exchange, the Naga payment card, which is a massive thing that will come now, if you value the social network and the copy trading capabilities, then this is the pricing and the offering we have. And mm -hmm. this has been discussed, this has been developed, and I don't foresee changes there. Okay. Well, Naga X. Yes. When will work out into NagaX to make it as responsive as Binance mm -hmm. and gain some market share? So, um, of course, look, Binance is um, it's, it's massive. I mean, they are, I think they're a hundred billion dollar exchange, something like this. Um, of course, our aim will be to fix NagaX uh, with a new MD in crypto, the managing director. 
he will fix the wallet. We will also release a new wallet UI, which will be exciting. Mm -hmm. There will be also a native wallet um, on the app, so you don't have to go to the web view anymore. It will be a native crypto wallet. And obviously, we will try to make the MAG exchange more stable, with better liquidity, uh, a deeper book, because some people like to trade the book, um, and just in general less error um, I mean, affected, because I agree that there has to be some changes, and we will work on it this year as well. So crypto is now, especially in the second half of the year, is very important for us. We announced just on, uh, it was Monday I think, mm -hmm. we announced that we license our crypto project. Why? Because we believe in it. We were not doing much in the past, it's true. There's nothing that I can tell you, we were working like crazy. Our focus was on the uh, social investing network and our uh, revenue growth. Now, where we're doing very well, we have now a team that will fix all around crypto, everything. The exchange, the wallet, the pricing, the liquidity, the stability and support. So it's a very, very important uh, item. Once again, what I said in the beginning, trading, investing, payments, Crypto. These are three divisions which we will build up step by step and they will work all like at, at the best level. Mm -hmm. So for following question to that, can we add more assets, example, car loads mm -hmm. and other small caps to invest in? Yes, we will. I mean, especially on the crypto side, we will, um, we will enhance our offering. We will uh, add tons of tokens. We will have capabilities to list tokens. Uh, which, which are interested to list with us, like on any other exchange. Mm -hmm. We will also develop a trading API for NagaX. Um, I think that's also a big, um, you know, a big plus because it drives volume and uh, we will be a venue for, for other liquidity pools. Mm -hmm. um, but this, this half year, our new uh, director has the task, improve NagaX in liquidity, uh, improve the Naga wallet, uh, make the Naga coin more receptive and more appreciated in the community and try to you know um, create more demand for it mm -hmm. and um, this all together will help the, the crypto project and the crypto division and except crypto um, the user says i would like to see more assets types of stocks will mm -hmm. you include even seeing tech ipos would be yes. awesome yeah, yeah yeah i think look uh, to have ipos right away I, th I don't think we have the capabilities right now but what we will commit to is when there is an IPO, we instantly have it. And we now also have a specific analysts in the dealing desk that are now scanning to add more and more assets, which will be then part of the asset listing bot where everyone can have a look on a, on a daily basis. And we are providing any risk info when we're listing. But of course, we want to go soon to 1,000 assets. We're like at 700, 800 now. We want to go to 1,000 assets and we will list uh, interesting assets because that's, that's the key. People need to be able to trade whatever they like. Mm -hmm. And now there is a question also about NFTs. NFTs, yes. Mm -hmm. What's your take on those? Oh, I'm very excited about NFTs. I think the hype was very important. Again, awareness is there. People understand what NFTs are. Mm -hmm. Same what happened to crypto, by the way. There was no crypto knowledge and suddenly in 17 there was a massive boom. It crashed 90% down. But crypto was there. People understand there's cryptocurrencies. And then it gained again awareness. And I think NFTs, and I want for our wallet to have NFT support so you can store your NFTs. And we might go into NFT trading as well um, as a crypto project because this is the future of uh, tokenizing uh, these assets. I also believe, by the way, in DEX, digital asset exchanges uh, and decentralized asset exchanges, where I think even in the future, maybe not today, but in five to seven years, I don't think that every company will go to Nasdaq or to the German Stock Exchange to list their company, but they will list their project as a security on a digital asset exchange mm -hmm. and raise the funds from the crypto community because there will be liquidity, it will be a currency, and they will IPO on a DEX rather than IPO on a on a classic exchange. This was called STO or IEO. Um, this is the in, uh, initial exchange offering. And I think we will see more and more from the IEOs of very serious companies. At the moment, it's small projects and token projects done by crypto for crypto people. But I believe that there will be the real businesses with revenues, with business profiles saying, should I go Nasdaq or Amsterdam or Frankfurt or should I go to a DEX and do an IEO and get my funds instantly. I don't need the bankers, I don't need any underwriters, I don't need any sponsors. I just go on a DEX, 
they get a notification and they just invest. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my take on, on the future when it comes to digital asset exchanges and tokenized assets. And NFTs are nothing else than a, yeah, it's a non fungible token, but it's still a uh, tokenized asset like a picture or a music title or a card. Yeah. Yeah. So now a question about the Naga brand itself. Why the name Naga and why the chili? We get that a lot. Yeah. Get in with the chili. There you go. Um, <clears throat> when we try to find a name, I would say that Apple was already taken. <laughs> uh, we wanted to have uh, something short and something recognizable. And uh, my co-founder, yes, back then, he actually came up with the idea. He said there is a chili in, uh, I think, in India, Indonesia, and the regions that uh, Southeast Asian India is known, and uh, it's called Naga. And we looked it up. We saw the domain is there. So in the beginning, Naga.com was taken, but we wanted to be a group, so we said the Naga mm -hmm. And then we bought the Naga.com domain for a lot of money, mm -hmm. <laughs> too much, <laughs> but it, it helps us, of course, not. It's a four letter domain, it's beautiful, it has a very good indexing as well, but it represents the hottest chili in the world. Mm -hmm. That's Naga. So now we're the hottest financial business in the All world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was also the idea. <laughs> so um, I, it's, this is actually a last question for you. And it's about Naga's sponsorships. Ah. There is a user asking if there is time. We do have time. Can you tell us a bit more about this sponsoring project? Is that a personal hobby? <coughs> and we're talking about Tio Linas. Tio yeah. Linas, Look, um, I didn't have touch points with racing at all, but Mike does, my uh, co-director uh, co and co-founder of Naga. And he, he loves cars. He's actually building an own car at the moment, which is crazy. I think it would have like one and a half thousand horsepower, so something, something completely crazy on this on a raceway, um, a speedway. But uh, he brought up the partnership with Tio. We flew also to uh, uh, Monte Carlo, to Monaco, and um, we have been to the race, Formula One race, and there was a Porsche Cup. And I'm extremely like I was like blown away because it was my first race. Mm -hmm. And it's not my personal hobby. I mean, it's in a way uh, Michael likes racing. He's attached. I'm more into soccer. Maybe we do something in soccer soon. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking into that. I'm a huge soccer fan, um, but uh, the sports and the racing represent something for the brand. It's fast, it's performance, um, it requires uh, discipline and target orientation. So this is what we try to also have it in terms of the racing brand. And Tio is a great guy. He's one of the best drivers in Cyprus and he was also a test driver for the Formula 1 and he was driving Formula 2. So I think uh, you know we, we chose someone that we support that represents the brand perfectly in a large venue and it's good for the brand exposure. Mm -hmm. So um, that's also a commercial decision. It's not only like because we like racing. Mm -hmm. Well, that uh, that was the last question from our users. Thank you all for sending them in. I thank you Ben for answering every single question that we got. I just wanted to do a little disclaimer that whatever we talked about here today is not a financial advice. We are not encouraging any type of trading behavior. This is Ben's experience, talking generally about your experience as well on the platform. So remember about that. And also smash that subscribe button not to ever miss any content that we produce for you guys, for your benefit. And follow us on all our social media channels, of course, as well. So thank you so much, Ben, for today. Thank, thank you, you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you.